Hey, it looks like we're going. Say something. Hey, welcome back to Sinister Cinema. We haven't been here in, uh, pretty much since this guy like nearly died. You were the one that almost died. You got COVID yeah. in your rectal area. Rectal COVID? Yeah, but, but then I felt better and then you got COVID. I just got COVID. We've been out of commission for like a year. Shh. I don't know what the problem is then. <laughs> it's, it's just us. Well, since last time we were here, we did both get COVID, right? Both of us got COVID. Yeah, I told you we should have took the damn vaccine, but now you're like, oh, it's made out of fucking horse. Enzymes and fucking cow udder juice. Fucking all kinds of shit, whatever you were saying. I no. Think it, I think it's made out of fetal tissue and gunpowder or something. I don't know. That's Stuff. what they do with the aborted babies? Yeah. Make vaccines. And Pepsi. Pepsi and vaccines. I heard that. I heard that that's what makes <laughs> Pepsi taste different from Coke. Yeah. They made some flavoring that that is made out of aborted baby cells. Baby fetal cells. Sales. It's pretty uh, good. Little baby sex. <laughs> little baby nut sex. <laughs> oh my god. So how's everything been going? With Welcome you to the, the last, last show <laughs> of Sinister Cinema. <laughs> Ever. Oh man. What's been going on with you? I haven't seen you in a while. We really only see each other on show days. And it's been like a year. Just dying, mm. slowly dying. Aren't you raffling off all your stuff? Yeah. What all you got? Everything. I got everything. I know you got a lot of horror laser disc. VHS, laser disc, beta, eight track soundtracks. Who has eight track soundtracks? You do. I have. Eight Rosemary's Baby. 8-track? Eight 8-track Eight soundtrack. That's work. That's pretty good. Um, speaking of some of the stuff you have, though. Oh, yeah. You brought this mask today by Cap. Cap is the uh, the artist. Cap's TwistedVisions.com that doesn't exist anymore. But he has some really cool stuff, but... Um, like, haven't people put this on and, like, died and shit? Supposedly it's haunted. If you wear it and you take a picture, bad shit happens to you. Like what? Bad shit, I don't know. Yeah, Try but it. what's some stories? <laughs> Try it. I want to know some stories of what has happened. Some stupid, dumbass kid used it in a commercial. And I told him, dude, it's haunted. Shit's going to happen to you. Oh, I'll be fine. Like an actual TV commercial? Like they borrowed it and used it in a TV yeah. commercial? Oh. Not a, well. Local. Yeah, local. San Antonio. He wore it. San Antonio. Next say week, it? his wife left him. He lost his job. And he had to move into his car because they kicked him out. I told him. He laughed. And guess what? The week after he laughed, I laughed. Because you like people's misery? Because I fucking told him. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Oh. Korean horror. What do you think about Korean horror? Korean horror? South Korean? Or just like the actual horror of having to live in North Korea? Well, both, I guess. I mean, I we don't want to... talk about anything on this channel. I don't want to live in North Korea. They're like three inches shorter than the South Koreans. So they don't have good food. Uh, you saw that anything. documentary, right? Where like those actors went there to kill him. There's like a documentary. It's like James Franco and they went and killed him or something. Or tried to. I saw it. Yeah, it's pretty good. Where he gets honey dicked. Yeah. You honey dicked? <laughs> That's happened to people we know in real life. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, who you are. What, one day you're just sitting there, life is great, all of a sudden you're in a cult. Oh, cults. <laughs> <laughs> Bad 
big oh, man. titty cults. <laughs> uh, so what South Korean horror? What are, what are we talking about today? What movies are we talking about? I've seen We're a lot of movies. We're talking about the sadness. Rob Jabba's sadness. Yeah, you can't you can't really blame us if we don't know how to pronounce these guys' names. Is that because you're racist? What? <laughs> I don't know. No. I just don't know how to pronounce Korean names. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, Wait, so don't blame The first movie is not Korean movie that we're talking about. The Sadness is a... Ta Taiwanese? It's, yeah. So... Same shit. Depending man. on your political affiliation, it's, it's same, either... It's the same shit. You know, Taiwan or it's Chinese. But they make a lot of fun of... China in the movie, I feel like. Kind of little subtle jabs. That's like saying, hey, this movie was made in Juarez, or hey, this movie was made in El Paso. It's the same shit. Well. <laughs> yes, it is. See? They're so, all Mexicans. So you're, oh. <laughs> <laughs> see? Ah, so, the sadness. What do you think about it? What's it about? It's, um... Uh... Is it it's Canadian? Wait, is it Canadian? Made is it Canadian? Canadian? It's South Canadian Korean director. Canadian? I think they probably did that because Canada pays you with taxpayer money to make movies. No, what it's are we really doing weird. here? They give a lot of... There's some weird stuff in my glass. America barely pays you to work. Canada and New Zealand give you money to... To make films. Go do shit. You can't get in there, though. They don't let people immigrate there. They don't let Mexicans immigrate there. Well, I mean, you couldn't get in there. I can get in. If you go to New Zealand and ask them, are there any Mexicans here? They'll say, I've heard of them. They're like, do those exist? I've heard of Mexicans. Sadness. <laughs> so, so what? It's okay. rated hard R. Well, the version we saw was unrated. Yeah, we watched the unrated version a couple days ago. Man, it was brutal. It was a freaking brutal show. Um, all practical effects for... I mean, 98% 90, of its practical effects. Yeah, there was a couple little... Like the gun exploding, obviously. Like, there was a couple... There was some things that were CGI, but like... A lot of the, the blood grenade, and... The grenade exploding yeah, head. Yeah. No, that was uh, practical too. But probably like yeah. the flash maybe yeah but that uh, was a good homage to scanners yeah that was great that was a good one um uh so what would you call it because i kind of looked online and it's like it's weird it's more like they're they do have kind of the 28 days later zombie rage thing going on I but. consider it murder porn. <laughs> it's like a snuff film. I mean, it's 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 like brutal, but I mean, if you want to see a good old fashioned eye fucking, <laughs> that's the place to go. There's definitely, there's definitely. Oh yeah, spoilers. <laughs> yeah, so it, it starts out with this couple that's in love. They look like. One of them's probably doing better off than the other one. Yeah, she's like a businesswoman, and he's yeah. like a just like a scrub. Scrub. I don't working, want no scrubs. Working in the film industry, right? It seems like it because he's talking about a shoot, so it's either yeah, probably film industry. And they're supposed to go on a trip, and he's like, "I'm sorry, something came up. I have to make money," and she yeah. gets all pissy. It's like he forgot about the trip, or at least he said he did. He's a liar. Yeah, she's totally with the scrub. What about the that the way you get into their apartment? That was like really weirded me out. That's very foreign to me. I don't like even the, remember like the balcony. The front door opened onto the balcony, and then you just went in through the sliding yeah, that was glass weird. door. Like the the balcony is what opened onto the. So it's like you're. I don't know. It's weird. It's like you don't really have much security from your neighbor, which didn't play out well. Whenever the neighbor yeah, turned just, into a zombie thing, he just walked over. Just walked right in. 
to try to rape her. Yeah, this is pretty much zombies wanting sex instead of brains. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, so it's a virus that the government is Blocks warning everybody about. Inhibitions, right? Is that yeah. what you do, I guess? Well, one doctor's warning people about it, who's the same doctor, I think, at the end that you see. Oh, yeah, it was Yeah, him. so he's on he's, TV warning, and everybody's kind of laughing at him, like, this isn't going to mutate. But he's talking about it has this protein chain that could mutate, and they don't know what it'll do. And it just seems to mutate instantaneously throughout the entire country in one day. Like, all at the same time. And people just go ape shit balls to the wall man it's like they don't want to infect you or they want to like eat you or have sex with you i mean the very first time the very first scene where uh on the train where she's on the train and all of a sudden <clears throat> oh jamie said was it sad it it was a little sad oh wait you said just kidding just dang it balls to the balls to the ball the eyeball <laughs> <laughs> there is an actual skull fucking in this movie and i mean it doesn't show it it doesn't get far enough to actually show like but it's so brutal that she winds up liking it before he yeah, even finishes it, yeah it's like the people like there's some crazy scenes. I think we should break those down in a minute. Like, scene obviously, down. I don't know anyone in this movie, so we can't talk about that because they're all Korean actors that I've never seen in anything before as long, as much as I can see. The director, you said he did a couple... He did music videos and mostly animation. But what were you saying? There was something you said he did. Um, like some cartoon... I don't know, Powerpuff Girls or oh, something. Oh, I was just throwing. Oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he told me. He told me that. Because you weren't paying attention to me. <laughs> I was so paying I was, attention. So I was just you like, oh, I, yeah, if he's I, done. If I wasn't paying attention, he's how done. would I remember that? Powerpuff you Girls. Said, you said you I'm were like, looking. he's done some Dexter's Laboratory. <laughs> yeah. But you weren't saying anything. So I, just I was just listening. I was and absorbing then I was the like, knowledge. Oh, cool. He even did some Fresh <laughs> Prince of Bel-Air. Did you hear that? I did not hear that part. But I did hear the Powerpuff Girls, and I was like, he did seven episodes of Powerpuff Girls? That's really bizarre, but he was Canadian, so... Best zombie orgy scene ever, also. Yeah, that was weird. I thought they were going to come around the corner and, you know, they were yeah, going to be uh, eating somebody, but they no, weren't. <laughs> just a bunch of zombies banging each other. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it made me feel a little weird inside. Like, I liked it, but... I didn't, and yeah. then I was like, what's wrong with me? I was like, ah, these feelings, these feelings that are bubbling up, I don't know. I just keep saying in my mind, so much blood. <laughs> <laughs> so much blood. So when it very first, it, it the, the couple split up to go to work. Well, he doesn't because he's a fucking loser, but she goes to work. He drops her off on his little scooter ped, and uh, she gets on a subway, he heads back home um he goes to meet one of his friends and some zombie shit happens but you know his wasn't that crazy he was in a diner some zombies a kind of typical type thing i'm just gonna call them zombies are you good with that Se yeah they're you just may call them sexies sexy sounds okay good. so the sexies go a little crazy in the in that but they're more zombie fine out there. They're just like biting people and kind of beating the shit out of people. He like takes off a cops out there. He shoots at him like kind of crazy. So he gets back to his apartment. Cool. He's like trying to text his girlfriend. He had left his phone there because it was at 3% plugged it in before he dropped her off when had some bow. Um, and then he, is that how you say that? Those little biscuits. Know. Yeah. I always thought those Bayo. things were smaller. Are they that size? Yeah, they're like this big. Oh, it's something Trader they were like, Joe's has some jam. I thought they were ones. like that big, but when he took his out, that thing was like this big. Yeah, they're big. We get them every once in a while. They're good. Uh, they're like steam buns. They're good. If you want to come over, I want to learn how to make them. I was actually just talking to 
my significant other about learning how to make those things. And then we went to a couple, we went to the international market here. I'm gonna go off on a tangent here. We went to the international market because we were like, okay, cool. It what, maybe... the H-E-B Mercado? Yeah. Is that where you went? No. <laughs> we went to Fiesta. I think those are only in Texas and LA. So Home of the fucking 49 cent <laughs> loaf of bread. It looks still. like it looks like a disco. It looks like a disco place from the outside at night. So we we like uh, went to this international market here. And so what what does that bring to mind to you? What do you think is going to be in there? I mean, H E B is pretty much the Mexican market. So like, other than other than Mexico, what what would international market? What would you think? To go find some fancy caviar. Well, we were just looking basically for some some Asian food stuff, wraps, some I don't know, that kind of stuff. And we go in and it's literally just like a uh, Indian grocery store, which yes, India is part of Asia, but it was not the Asian food we were looking for. And this isn't the Asian food. You're yeah, looking for. This is not the Asian food you're looking for. But, like, I was really bummed that it was called the international market when it should have just been called, like, Indian market. Is that, like, does that, like, mean anything to you? Or You know there's one right by my house, right? What, an Asian market? On what street? On Hildebrand before Blanca. Is it that little one in the house? I think so, The yeah. little Japanese one? Yeah, that one's good. I mean, it's very small, though. We were looking for a big... I wanna, if you're in San Antonio and you know where there's a giant Asian market where I can get like anything I want, you know, there's like live fish swimming around, they spear and hand to you. Like, that's what I want. I want like a legit Asian market. There's nothing like that. Damn anymore. it. The one, there's one in, in, there's a chain and it's called, uh, But if you want to go buy all the fucking cheese dipping Lucas you want. Dude, there's, there's like a cheese dip store. 50, you can literally go in. <laughs> 50 goddamn stores here. You can literally go into Rico's and get the cans of cheese. It's they so have nice. a thing on their line online where it's like, oh, do you need this for a fundraiser? And they'll like, they'll like give it to you. You can like apply to get free Rico's. It's weird. Oh, cheese dip sounds good. Yeah, it does. Dang. You make some pretty good cheese dip for... Being a white boy. How does it? How does it? How does it pronounced? White boy. No, no. Queso. Cheese dip. Queso. I never call it that. I'm Mexican. I know. Say it like you'd say it. Cheese Damn dip. It. Cheese dip. So whenever yeah. I go to a Mexican restaurant, I'll be like, "Can I?" Get a, you know. You know the secret to dip? good Mexican cheese dip. Go to a Mexican restaurant. No, you put cream cheese in it to make it a little more white. Not white, like people white. No, but. that's just goddamn people white, too. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever say that out loud. Mexicans are fucking right. Like, if I say you put a little cream cheese in it, you asked me why it was so good, and I told you. I can't stand cream cheese. But you liked it in that. Yeah, it was good. No, yeah. you know what? I take that back. Sour cream is what I don't like. Hmm. Because it has the word sour cream, which means rotten milk. Yeah. You know what? I don't like white Russians. I don't understand why people mix milk with alcohol. It's it, it curdles it, right? Terrible. Doesn't it curdle it? It is the worst shit. I went to Tahoe one time on a on a. Uh, do they have black Russians? They do, right? I don't know. I think they do. Probably with like Kahlua or something in it, coffee or something. I I went to. Lyric said. That's two words. And Wait. she said, yes, they do have okay. black Russians. Okay, that's good to hear. Um, I went to Tahoe one time for a... No, I meant people, Lyric. People. Go ahead. I went to Tahoe one time and uh, with a group of guys for a, a um, mm -hmm. bachelor party. A group of guys, yeah. Bachelor party. Mm -hmm. Group and, of guys. Uh, Sounds like somebody Some that crazy I, stuff. Sounds happened. like somebody we used to know at <laughs> at paper. They used to go on vacations with groups of guys. So what I happened? Don't give a fuck. 
All right. What happened is the lady's walking around with drinks, and this group of guys I'm with were playing craps, and the only game that has any odds of you winning at all, by the way. Um, the dice game? Yeah. I don't know. If you play it, if you play six and eights, you you can come out. I, I can I'll play teach it. you my I'll teach you my system. I I can play the red or black. No, that's that's there. rough. That's a rough one. Why the odds are? No, I guess that's so. I guess you're I guess you're good. Well, the thing is, people start betting on actual numbers, like red sixteen, or I don't know anything about that shit, but um, that seems like a rich person's game, like <laughs> James <Very> Bond's <laughs> plane. <laughs> um. But but like so one of the guys told me I'm going to order us drinks because they're free anyways. I'm like, okay. This lady comes back with a tray full of drinks and I pick it up and I'm like, is that milk? A glass of milk you order? Like I was like, what? And they were like, it's a white Russians. And I was like, what's in it? Like vodka and milk. I don't know. Jamie, do you know what else is in there? Um, it's. I know it's vodka and milk. And I took one sip of that shit, and I was like, I'm going to vomit. I'm going to vomit. It's nothing like the sweet taste of Svitka strawberry lemonade vodka. Uh, I like your xenomorph tattoo. Oh, thanks. Some chick that we used to know did it on him. She doesn't call us anymore. Come see us. Lyric, while you're here, I, was, I told your dad the other day, I I, uh, I nearly... Um, she said it's basically an iced coffee with vodka in it. It's good. Wait, why did it not look like iced coffee? Why did it look white? Why was it like... Are you sure that wait does it have Kahlua in it? What makes it coffee? It's vodka half and half Kahlua and you can add a splash of Bailey's for sweetness. You, you should have said you can add a splash of Bailey's if you're feeling a little frisky. <laughs> Next week we're making black or white Russians. I don't know if I can get behind that. <laughs> I can't even drink that much milk. I can't drink a latte anymore unless it's soy. You know, when, when I was like in my 20s and we'd go out to drink, I see people do this now and I'm like, you fucking tool. <laughs> go to the bar and order Irish car bombs. Oh, is that like just like the Jameson inside a... Jameson inside a Baileys, Baileys ice, whatever. I thought it was Jameson it was like inside of a Guinness. What is it? Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. It tastes like chocolate just, milk. Does it really? Yes, it tastes like chocolate yeah. milk. I can't stand Guinness. Oat milk white Russians. We could do that. Mm -mm. Almond milk white Russians. I'd rather just drink some like vodka or some whiskey drinks. Okay. Just shots. We can do shots next week. Yeah, so the skull fucking... So yeah, that yeah. guy like straight skull fuck that chick. That's pretty bad. Yeah. Um, they don't so show it, but it it's, it's bad burned, enough. Just, burned in your mind. Yeah, you know? it it's like they they leave it to the imagination. Oh, but you left off at the train when she's on <clears> the yeah, train. Yeah, that's what I wanted to get back to before we like start talking about Indian markets. Um, the the train. There's this businessman who is, uh, who is sitting next to the girlfriend and he starts talking to her oh i've been watching you whatever i'm looking at you you're pretty i've been seeing you on the train all this stuff and she's freaks out she's kind of like get away from me sexual harassment you know she goes all fucking social justice warrior on him the businessman and was played by su chiang wang that's pretty good i think yeah that, is, I that was him um, He's a fucking creep. That dude, dude's a creep. So, in the but whole movie. I think he was just really being kind of nice to her. And no, she, he was acting like a pervert. Well, he just told her she was pretty. You don't. You can't say that to chicks nowadays. Didn't you know that? 
Think about it. If somebody like me goes up to a girl and leans in and goes, I think you're pretty. They're going to fucking, fucking do stuff. I don't know what well, they're going to do. But she started But look going, at me. I wouldn't want somebody but, like me telling me I'm pretty. <laughs> <laughs> but he got he got all upset and he's like, I was just trying to pay you a compliment and you're, call, you're saying it's sexual harassment and all this. And so, you know, it got weird. But then he gets infected by the virus, and and uh, he goes ape shit. I mean, everybody on the train goes ape shit. This guy just starts stabbing the fuck out of people, and then the one, the one, the I mean, it was great because he like stabs that girl. A little bit of practical effect, blood coming out. But then that one where he walks up and he stabs the guy in the like right in the neck. That was like overkill, but it and was And then all of a sudden he pulls it out, and it's like a shot up at the train, like from a, an underneath shot at the roof, and the blood just sprays like freaking dead alive style. I usually style. don't care for, care for over-the-top gore like that. I mean, it's cool, like dead alive, Peter Jackson. That was like over-the-top face ripping off, yeah. like light bulb in the mouth. Well, I mean, that's like a joke. You know, I mean, that's like funny. Uh, but uh, this stuff I usually don't care for, it, but this stuff was just too good not to. Dude, not, it was crazy. Like. So if they, you like if you like gore, even if you don't like gore, you should just watch it for. Just get a group of friends together and watch a good old fashioned eye fucking. <laughs> like you can't go wrong. <laughs> I like that. That's what we pulled out of this whole movie. So during this whole thing, she helps a girl on the train they she that girl gets stabbed in the eye by the businessman and they take off and and basically her whole part of the story there's two storylines going on there there's the guy trying to get to his girlfriend and the girlfriend trying to get to a hospital basically or get to safety and and the girl they're running from that businessman the whole time dude it's the businessman when he finally catches up to him and he fucks her in the eye. Yeah. <laughs> he, he fucks the friend in the eye. I mean, she's not really a friend. I guess she's just a person that they met. Her name was... This is why we... I'm sorry. We didn't take notes. We're just winging it. What was her name? Mindy? Mandy? Mo... Uh, Cat. No, that was the main lady. Molly. Molly was the one that gets eye fucked. Ying Ru Chen. You're good, man. I am good. good. I am good. Yeah. Um, I don't know what's going on here. Well, new followers. We have, uh, is that Chris? Chris, is that you? I think so. Yeah, it is. It's Chris. Hey, what's going on? Look at this mask here. I, I sent him a picture, yeah. I told him it's haunted. Um, I'm going to mix another drink here. Because I'm out. Oh, yeah, here. Look at this beautiful work of art. Do you see this? Look at it. Are y'all looking? made by hand this is made by hand from uh casey from uh they own sugar mommies in austin sugar mommies in austin best voted best bakery in the world <laughs> it's not a scorpion Chris, we just watched uh, we just watched uh, Alien Covenant today, where David makes the face huggers. Pretty good. I I uh, I liked it. I liked that origin story. I like the fact that he kissed himself. Dude, that was the sexiest part. Michael Fassbender kissing Michael Fassbender. Dude. I'll uh, hey some Chris, good old I'll, German I'll, love. I'll text my friend. I don't know how much she charges, but they're pretty bitchin', man. Like it's really nice. Yeah. Nice made, nicely made. 
<clears throat> so anyways, in the hospital, no, no, let's skip over to, uh, to, uh, Jim, Jim, who, the boyfriend. Who was the other? Was that Pam? That had us? I better say something. <laughs> so, see, Chris says, wouldn't you kiss yourself, Carlos? <laughs> yeah, I would. Anyway, if I looked as good as Michael Fassbender, I'd be making out with myself know. all the time. You don't even know what I would do if I only had one eye. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me sad, Ness. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, so, it's Pam. Say so hi, Pam. Over, hi, Pam. This so, is Doug. So over to the guy's story, when he's like trying to get over there, he gets to the... He's trying to get into the city to get to the hospital where he where she is, um, and she, or he's just trying to get in the city. He doesn't know that she's at the hospital at this point. But he gets to a bridge. I mean, to a tunnel. Which in all zombie movies, the tunnels There's are always, a tunnel. always uh, blocked off. You always either have to go through, and it sucks, or zombie game. No matter what it is, there's always a tunnel that's fucked up. So he's gone on his little scooter. So he's driving around. Well, he he comes up. Uh, I don't know why he stopped, but he stopped and and for some reason he hears the guy yelling and there's like four kids that are that are zombie fight living shit out of this guy. Yeah, like to the point where they like found some barbed wire and they wrap it around a pole and they're and slamming they, his and they ass say, into it. They say nutcracker and they pick him up and they like one on each arm, one on each leg, and they just run towards the pole and like slam him into it. He falls. Oh. And then, and then he kind of fights the kids for a second, and they run off. And then he goes to see if the guy's okay. Well, the guy during the whole thing has uh, become infected while they're beating him up, which I assume is what happened with the girl while she's getting skull fucked. And I feel like that's going. We're, how many times do you think we've already talked about that? It's so weird. Who cares? It's so messed up. Who cares? This episode is called Skull Fucked. So he he uh, he like goes to see if the guy's okay, and the guy turns and he's like, "Why did you stop them? I was just about to nut." It was real fucked up. And so then the kid all of a sudden rocks start hitting him, and and he, you know, they're they're like yelling, and he takes off running, jumps on his scooter, and takes off. Meanwhile, back at the hospital, she finds some uh, survivors there. Well, first of all, all hell broke loose at the hospital. Yeah, so only the emergency room is open. Yeah, right? and so the 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 businessman guy who had who was stalk the stalker guy, he sees her through the window and like he has an axe and he like chops through the window, kills a cop, like. She takes off running, and, and everybody else uh, is kind of stuck there and probably all gets skull-fucked. And then they, they run away. She runs away. She gets hold of, uh, she gets hold of um, Jim on, on the phone, and they're talking, and she's like, I'm trying to hide or whatever. Um, and she gets up to – she finds that guy. But while he's talking to her – he sees his mannequin head in the water. Oh yeah. And it comes to life and he starts tripping balls a little bit and you realize he's You're probably changing. He's probably changing. Yeah. Into a skull fucker. Yeah. That's what they're they're not called sexies anymore. They're called skull fuckers. Skull fuckers. Okay. So it keeps cutting back, um and it kinda cuts back to uh to some of the to some of the Who is that? Hello. Um, so it kind of cuts back to some hey! of the. <laughs> you have to say it like she's. Hey, how you doing? So it cuts back to some of the skull fuckers and what? Why? Oh, it was the guy. The guy. So there was a guy who they were kind of with two. Um, I guess he was like a guard type guy. It was like one of the train guys that was with the girl and the and the girl that gets skull fucked and. While they're still alive, he's he's hiding because he's scared and and he like actually sees her getting skull fucked. 
but then he's trying to get away so after that happens and he walks and you hear the noises and that's when he kind of looks around a corner and there's just like a crazy like zombie orgy that's like disturbing i also wanted to say there's a lot of rape in this movie like a lot whether it's skull fucking or whatever there's a lot of rape in this movie did you think it was done tastefully though uh when is rape actually ever done tastefully well i mean okay so at least they started off the first time they started off the first person that gets raped is a dude by other dudes in the train like people are just getting murdered and they're just like totally ass banging that dude oh yeah that's right forgot about that i guess i blocked it that's <laughs> what happens it's a lot of rape a lot of rape so pam makes it to the hospital wait who's pam i call her pam because uh, her boyfriend's name was jim it reminds me of jim the office and pam. oh so cat cat is now pam so pam true true what what's true lyric i'm lost sometimes there's just too much going on so pam makes it up to this room and the guy the the crazy guy corners her and the businessman the businessman and she's hiding but there's no real place for her to go and the businessman looks down and sees a place where there's supposed to be a fire extinguisher and there's there's one missing and as soon as he looks up she's spraying him in the face you know how what you, what you, that's pretty good there's a fire extinguisher right there if you want it's a little crooked on the wall yeah i think it's fucking crooked. um so she sprays him in the face and she walks up she hits him he goes down um because he he's not like he's not like yeah he starts laughing you know people like people are totally like sadist in this movie it's it's like an S M movie like to the extreme i think the director man that dude he's they should probably, probably a fucking weirdo they should like probably red flag his ass and put he's him in a, prison he has to be a weirdo like so she hits him and then it goes into like a pretty good gore fest because she just starts pounding the shit she starts pounding the shit out of this guy with oh. with the with the uh, fire extinguisher like completely smashes his head in and it shows it you know it the first time it shows it it like is like one of those like quick takes it shows it and it's over but like it definitely shows it multiple times like it shows his head like pretty much gone it's pretty fucked up like well the last scene it's just nothing it's yeah, just it's the just, bottom part of his yeah Okay. And and so as she stand there, they she starts hearing somebody else coming, and this door opens up, and this guy's like, "Come in!" She runs in, and the door shuts behind her, and you, there's like a guy in a what was like we find out is it was a maternity ward, and because of the maternity ward, it's super secure, and he's like got on his mask, but he's also got a gun, and he like makes her handcuff herself to a to shower. a shower and and he she sprays him with he sprays her with uh, chemicals or chemicals to like kill any disease and it basically insinuates oh no it does because like she's he ends up um he's the one who was on tv warning everybody right yeah yeah and so he's taught telling her this is a maternity ward it's secure all this stuff you need to change your clothes here's to take a shower all this so she takes a shower she goes to throw her dirty clothes into a basket <laughs> that was that's an awesome and part. she hears a noise fucking zombie straight up zombie that fool is just sitting there screaming and the eyes are all big and yeah. red oh man and then the dude pulls the gun back out on that her. was almost that was almost equal to uh, the zombie baby from uh, the remake of Dawn of the Dead. When the mom dies and they pull the baby out. Oh, yeah. Just eating her from the inside. Yeah, that thing was... Yeah. That was all CGI. This... I don't know. The baby maybe looked like it was CGI, too, I don't too, know. Maybe? I feel like it was like a rubber baby. Rubber baby? Bubby bunkers. Bubby bunk bunker. Bubby bunkers. Rubber baby bunker. I was, I was thinking that. Why was I thinking that? Where is that from? 
It's what you're supposed to. It's a tongue twister. We'll, we'll fix that in post. <laughs> so, so the the the. Uh, Jamie, make sure you dub that. Then she's like, then she's like, oh fuck, this guy's like killing babies. And then he he grabs her, handcuffs her, and then he, for some reason, tells her that he has. I guess because they're in Korea, it's hard to get guns. But he tells her, I 3D printed this gun, and I had a couple bullets left over from my time in the service. I'm like, dude, Korea must suck. Can't get guns. And then. It's uh, going to be like that here soon, too. I know. I do. Um, and so then, uh, and then the, uh, I just thought that was weird that he mentioned that he 3D printed a gun because you can't 3D print a whole gun, but that's a whole nother thing um so uh he he locks her up and tells her i injected all these fucking babies with the oh he first he when he locks her up he sticks her with something and he's injecting her with the with the virus, the virus. and uh that and tells her like i injected all these babies because they were going to die anyways he was I mean, like it's true might as well kill he them was for like, science. if they would have got here if they would have got here they would have had sex with them or eaten them. Yeah. And I was like, ugh. But so he injects them to see if any of them are are uh, immune, so he can make make an antidote. Of course they weren't, so he just threw them in a hamper. Speaking of sex with babies, did you ever see Serbian film? No, but I haven't either. Janet talks about that movie all the time. Janet's a fucking weirdo. She says she watches it like twice a week. Oh God, that's like, that's like I need to call, like the FBI and tell her and say like, hey, this bitch, There's something wrong with her. This bitch wears crop tops and she talks about watching baby raping movies twice a week. Yeah, that's weird. Some weird shit. So, anyways, then, uh, then. Uh, they start to they he tells her like you're immune, immune we can make a cure with you and and she's like i got these keys we can go to the he's texting with somebody and they're like saying be at the other roof in five minutes the helicopter's gonna take them so they're like badass let's get out of here so they go to get out and what happens jim shows up fucking jim shows up and he's all fucked up He's a zombie. Has rape in his eyes. So he wants to rape, and he grabs. First of all, he he gets in a fight with the with the uh, doctor guy, the virologist. The virologist shoots him once in the neck, and like kind of stops him. He grabs his neck, and then, but he gets to him and bites him because the virologist has a crappy three D printed gun, and he shoots and it explodes in his hand. Remember that part? The gun exploded because it was 3D printed. That was... He must not have lemon. had Ender 3. Welcome, Lemonade Stand. I don't know what that means. Is there somebody called Lemonade Stand? <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> Lemonade Stand. <laughs> I'm confused Rachel, once I say that. Rachel's you have a new out. follower. Oh, a new follower, Lemonade Stand. I didn't see that pop up. Hey, Chris Lemonade said, Stand. Chris said Rachel's freaking out about baby rape. <laughs> Rachel, oh, it's fuck. just baby rape. It, there's no baby rape that happens. He kills the babies before anyone can rape them, so it's okay. So, um, so he didn't kill Baby them. rape. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so, so, uh, she, the, he, lemon stand, Pat is Pat. Remember him? This is me remembering back. Carlos has had COVID twice and nearly died. I don't hospital. remember. I don't remember. You remember when I came to see you in the hospital and you're like, who are you? That's fucked up. That's what it was like. I'm just <laughs> I'm asking you if you remember that. <laughs> 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 
What's AOL? Damn, AOL. <laughs> Remember? That shit? <clears throat> if, uh... Ymir. If, 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 That's uh, old. Old. Good times. If AOL... Remember you had to... At first, they didn't even have a... If you got a call on your DSL, like it just... Or DLS. I don't even remember what it's called anymore. Jamie? Um, but whenever your phone line would ring... I had no, to put mine. Call DSL. It wouldn't even call DSL. I used even to, have DSL to put my, at that point. my rotary phone on that thing with the two ports. Dude, you don't even know. We literally, whenever I used to be on tour, we had this thing that you could type a message into, and you went to a payphone and called a one eight hundred number, and you held it to it, and it it started ringing, and then it sent that code, and it sent the text as an email to somebody. <laughs> That was weird. DSL, DSL. <laughs> yeah, so used to whenever I had DSL. Whenever, uh, dude, I've had the same phone number since cell phones. I've came never out. had one. I've had one number ever, that, and that's why this, I get so many spam calls now. I've had the same number Me since too. they came out and said, "Hey, check this out." You can talk while driving. And I was, it was so cheap. I was like, fuck, only $600 a month? <laughs> Remember when text used to be 25 cents per text? I was like, $600 a month, I am in. And then I went to pay my bill because it was right next door to the tattoo studio. So I went next door to pay my bill, counting out the hundreds. And the guy's <laughs> like, <laughs> And he was like, hey, would you like to add this new technology? Called text message? Called texting. And I was like, texting? What is that? And he goes, well, if they have the plan, you can send each other messages back and forth. If you both pay 25 cents per message, wasn't it like 25 cents was like 10 cents? It, it was, you had to pay per, you had to pay for the service and then pay per text. So my bill went from six to nine. <laughs> Just because I was like, hey, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> oh, nothing here. Where are you at? Corpus. 25 cents. Corpus. 25 cents. Damn, 25 dude, cents. you're in Corpus and we're talking? That is so fucking Well, you know what's really – so my friend – This is the end of the world. That's so, what I told him. This is going to be the downfall of society. Dude, you were right. You're like Ted Kaczynski. Talking about the future of technology. That dude um, from Cheers? Yeah. Yeah. Norm, I think. Um, so Chris has had the same number. My my friend since he was seventeen. My friends Duncan and Stephanie lived in Japan. Dude, but you're only like what, twenty eight now? Me? Chris said he's had the same number since he was seventeen. Oh yeah, it's like twenty eight or twenty five. Yeah. So um, they came one time to Dallas, and I went to meet them. We went to a Mongolian beef Who? grill. My friend Duncan and Stephanie. Um, we went to Genghis Grill, it was called. And you got to pick your own meat and then grill it at your own table. It's like they made you do the work and charged you extra. I don't know. But so anyways, afterwards, they went out, and they were like, look at this. And they had their flip phones. And they were like, our phones take pictures. I was like, what? What was it like? One in one point two. Dude, it was the worst shit. But we were all taking pictures with them, and they were like, "Look at this. We also have texting." And I was like, "What's texting?" They're like, "Well, it doesn't work in the U.S. yet, but everybody's doing it in in Japan." And I'm looking at it, and I'm just like, "That's never gonna catch on. Who the fuck wants to text? Like, I just want to call somebody." Hell now I'm no. like, "Please don't call me. Just send me a text." I mean, it's if because it's you, we've I want grown. You to call me to hate people i don't want to talk to anybody just like in the sadness yeah you just want to fuck their skulls yeah 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 always mm. oh and you said the pictures were cool right weren't they clear and shit <laughs> the ones on his phone yeah no oh i thought you said well i mean they were this big first of all because the screen was like this big oh yeah and like the color was terrible because it was probably like 200 you know by 100 DSL. 
<laughs> so, so, but it was terrible, but it was fun, you know, to see like this crazy shit that we didn't have yet. And, uh, that was when everybody here still rocking pagers and sidekicks. Dude, I also had a pager that you could text. Oh, I had one of those too. I would fucking, somebody would, te I'd be at a show and then my pager would go off. So I'd look at it. Like old dog from fucking Menace to Society. <laughs> Remember that scene? <laughs> That's what I would do. But then I would flip that bitch open, like a fucking sidekick. <laughs> Remember the sidekick? Yeah, dude, I had a sidekick. I didn't have a sidekick. I used a sidekick because it was a group sidekick. But yes, I think Jamie said this number that we say in our head, and we're gonna be activated. Oh, seven, to seven, three, kill four. People. I don't know what that means. <laughs> oh, seven, seven, three, four. Oh, seven, 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 three, four. I don't know what that means. What was that movie? Or the Ultra? American Number Station? Ultra? Oh, I haven't seen that yet. No, no, no. Because it has the Jesse actual, Eisman. The actual supposedly American real, Ultra. The actual name of the real thing that they did. The government. Mockingbird Project? No, the Ultra. Oh, uh, Ultra, MK Ultra. Is yeah, that what yeah, that movie's yeah, about? Yeah. Yes, but it's it's pretty good. Upside down. Oh, seven, seven, Hello. three, four. Upside down. It's how it's like text that you send with a pager. Oh, jeez. Jamie's older than both of us, so she knows all this technology. No, Jamie's actually a college student here at USTA that needs a credit, so she, she runs our been computer. Going to college for like fucking ten years. Well, that's what she you do. Needs to just that's what you do nowadays. Find something else. Ah, <sighs> oh, Chris seven, got it. Seven, three, four. Um. So, uh, this is gonna be the last thing before we start talking about the movie. What again. was that? Uh, no, yeah, you gotta do boobs. <laughs> boobs. 8008. Five. Five. Um, so do you remember... Boobs. You remember when you only had a 9 pad or 11 pad or whatever it's called? 10 key? I don't know. I don't know what that is. I don't know what it is on a phone. You know the one that looks like a regular phone? You dude. Could, and you had to go... Doo, 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 dude, doo, I was doo, doo, such... Your doo, mind... You are like, memorize it. So I was like, dude, I could fucking... Dude, there was a guy that I knew. <laughs> there was a guy that I knew that literally. We, we did this to ourselves. Yeah, I know. <laughs> there was a guy I knew that would be driving it and just like, just sending fucking text because it was the nine key thing, and he knew. I was just like, what the fuck? This is crazy. You know, after you know all these fucking crazy games angry birds and all this bullshit on there dude all i want i, I want angry birds. i want fucking snake dude that's all i want you probably can i mean you can get that if you really want Not, it, it wouldn't be the same no dude i'm angry birds was good that was a one of the first really really good games i feel like on the iphone so anyways so after the skull fucking happens um about 30 minutes past that we're upstairs. The babies are dead. This lady's like, I'm going to get you. He's like, I'm going to get you to the roof. Dead babies. And the boyfriend shows up. Gun explodes. That guy gets attacked. How did he kill the doctor? Into, the doctor gets bitten by the boyfriend. Jimmy, Jimmy fucking bites the doctor. And she grabs the keys off of him and just takes off. Dr. Alan Wong? Played yep. by Wee Huan Lan. Yes, exactly. Great um, actor. So she gets to the roof. This is the very end of the movie. They don't show her go to the roof. They show her go out she, the door. She goes up to the door and then it, <laughs> in like an Ozark moment, door closes, screen goes black. And no, all, no, no, no. Door closes, they zoom in on the boyfriend, and he's all crazy smiling, and you hear gunshots. Yeah, so you don't know. No, they turn, shot her. They shot her, but why'd they shoot her? 
were they zombies and they shot her did she turn into a zombie was she immune and they just didn't know who she was and they shot her like either way it's tragic because shooting happens that we don't know what happens and that's what the tragedy is we don't know what the fuck happens and then fade to black fade to black but 30 minutes before that a guy fucked a lady in the skull and he was like oh by the time i nutted she was begging me to keep going it's that kind of movie yeah it was fucked that guy's last name was wayne too the guy that skull fucked her i just think that's funny Wayne. (laughs) i mean i find it funny it is funny but i love continuity in a movie so was there part you liked that was continuity continuital continent no after he gets done fucking her eye yeah the hole's bigger is it really yes you didn't see that son of a bitch no i didn't even notice that i That's was like good. deep down in my brain i was like yes yeah the hole's bigger because remember it's just like a screwdriver stab oh. or no uh he stabbed her with the uh, umbrella <laughs> and when he gets done and they show her again though know, her eye hole is bigger oh this movie just came out this year right uh last year remember 2021 we, we get it we get it later but it when it came out in the u.s 2022 though yeah okay shutter exclusive if you don't have fucking shutter you need to get shutter oh yeah it was rough it was a rough movie lots and lots of good practical effects though like i mean the gore is just it literally had a second like it had like a, an extra warning at the beginning telling you how gory it was it's pretty messed up pretty messed up so yeah i really like asian horror movies or they're fucking crazy man you know what i want to see speaking of asian horror movies and i can't tell you what it's called but uh I mean, because I don't know the name of the people, but the one where... Have you seen the new trailer for um, the the Ring and the Grudge combined movie? Where it's like the two spirits from both the movies fighting that's, each other? That's already on Amazon. I know. Have you seen the trailer? No. <laughs> it looks great. It's a horror comedy, but it takes like uh, Ringu and, and Juan and mix them together. We forgot about the the neighbor eating the fingers. That's right. What Jim was it? has two of his fingers cut off. Oh my god, yeah. So when he first realizes they're zombies, it's a neighbor no, he, he gets back to his house, he's trying to call he's trying to call Pam. Um and and the neighbor who is a gardener comes in with a pair of shears. And he grabs them. And you them. know, you know that shit's not gonna be. He end grabs well. them like this, the shears right here. And the guy just goes, and the fingers fall off. And then he like goes down and picks one up and he chews on it for a while and then like spits out the chewed up finger that was into, gross. Uh, I don't really, I don't into get the grossed out. fish tank. Yeah, it was a gory movie. You know what grosses me out? Skull fucking? No, that's actually not bad. Maggots. Baby murder? Oh. Maggots. Maggots. I cannot. So like Fulci films. Ugh. His films have a lot of maggots in them. The scene in Hellraiser, when she's in the closet, hiding, and the body, the body yeah. falls on her, and all the maggots come out oh, yeah. of the mouth. That shit gross me out. It didn't really bother me. It didn't no. bother me. You know what? You want to know why? Can I tell you my story? Yeah. So when I was young like 15 14 13 12 11 10 9, i eight. would sneak out of my house at night my dad's dead so i, I can say the story because he would probably be watching this 
Well, your mom's watching. She keeps commenting. She's like, Miho, please stop. Miho. <laughs> the chips and the rice is ready. My mom does not sound like that. <laughs> Did you say the chips and the rice are ready? The, ch the chips? <laughs> the Lord's chips. <laughs> Oh, anyway, so I would sneak out at night and we would go steal bikes because that's what 13 year old Mexican kids do. You know what? When I was fucking 13 and my bike got stolen, it's like it was probably a goddamn Mexican. That's and it probably was, wasn't it? White kids don't leave their fucking bikes chained outside. Dude. It's a fucking BMX bike. Put it in your fucking room. Dude. We go. It was chained to my fence. Bust you probably the chain, have my bike. Bust okay. the chain. Yep. Sounds about right. And steal them. Yeah. Did and you ever take? Did take you ever, them all apart and sell them? Did you the ever parts? take a Huffy Lightning? No, nah, we didn't. We got mongooses and shit. We got the good okay. shit. Yeah, I was a little too poor for that. That's why I lived in back the when, neighborhood. Back when this was before mongoose was in Walmart. <laughs> the real mongoose. Real mongoose. So. I'm stealing this bike. <laughs> it was a huffy fucking lightning mountain or whatever. You, what, you stole my bike! <laughs> so, and somebody comes out and they're like, hey. That's what I did. You Mexican. <laughs> they didn't say that. I just added that for dramatic okay. effect. <laughs> so I take off running back when I used to be able to run. <laughs> And I'm fucking jumping over a fence back when I used to be able to jump over a fence. <laughs> and I trip and I fall and I land on the ground and I roll over on my back and I hear something in my ear like... The devil. There's a... Did, did, did you ever see a... On Showtime? Master of Horrors? Yeah, some of them. Well, there's this one called... Fuck, I can't remember the name of it. Jamie? Master of Horror... I want to talk about it. It's Skull good. Fucker. It's about this guy that he keeps hearing shit. He has a, he's at work and he just keeps getting louder and louder. He doesn't know what it is. And it's like bugging the shit out of him. Well, anyway... I hear something in my fucking ears next to me and I had a flashlight with me so I get up real quick and I turn on my flashlight. There's a fucking dead pig. There was a fucking dead cat that was cat. opened up like something trying to eat its ass out or something. And the whole was... stomach was ripped open and it was full to the brim with maggots. And I was laying right next to that <laughs> fucking thing. So, you so get when I got up, fucking huffy. So when I fucking got up and I clicked on it, it was right here. And I was like, ah, Dude. fuck. And I freaked out. And that shit scarred me. That I just want to know scarred me. what kind to of. To this day, fuck that. I mean, anytime I see maggots, I get grossed out. I just I'm fucking know. 51, dude. I want to know what kind of 11 year old is such a good bike thief that they have have things to cut locks and a flashlight. My dad used to buy all kinds of tools. It's kind of like that 70s show when they'd go to Red's garage and take the tools to yeah. go get shit. The episode is called Sounds Like. Yeah, man. So the whole it's movie, just getting louder and louder it's getting and louder and louder and he's yeah. getting pissed off and we well, find out. It's like my tinnitus. You find out. Do you have tinnitus? What? I can't hear you over the ringing in my ears. Yes, I have bad Do you find out at the end? He, he fucking killed his wife and she's laying in his bed full of maggots. And they're calling and he into was his still ear. laying with her and that was the noise he was hearing. It's the maggots. And I think somebody, oh the the maggots crunching her or some got in his ear because he was laying next to her. The description is sound can be a treat or a terror for Larry. The sense we take for granted has been what? 
Free what? I can't read that. Preternaturally sensitized to the point. The fuck? I've never even heard pain. of that word. What does that even mean? It's a white person word. Don't worry about it. No, I'm serious. I've never Driving heard that word in my life. Larry. Insane. They made it rhyme. In the middle. Point of pain. Driving Larry insane. I'm going to make a rap out of that. But you'll have to do it. And you'll know who Larry is. Like he's, he plays like an asshole in movies and shit. Yeah, but you should, I have a uh, season one. I should bring it up here. No. Masters of Horror. Oh, and mm -hmm. Pam texts me what Shudder was. It's Shudder with D's, not Shud. T's. Shud. 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 Shudder. And it's, it's all horror. All, all horror day, all the time. All night. Beyond what is normal or natural. So like preternatural skull fucking. Preternatural. Why haven't I never <laughs> heard that before? Uh I don't know. Oh man. <laughs> is that the Victor Pascal shirt? Yes. Mine is a red shirt. It's just red. It's to signify all the blood that was in that movie. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I was telling that, somebody. Is, is no, there anything no, no. else? I was telling somebody there is fucking blood in every, almost every scene of that movie after. As minutes. soon as, as soon as as soon as the zombies wait no what do we call them skull, fucker. skull fuckers as soon as the skull fuckers like appear isn't that what what's his name calls those skull monsters in Kong. That Kong movie with Samuel Jackson? I don't know. Skull crawlers. Skull crawlers. <laughs> I was Almost. like, I don't remember that. That that movie was <laughs> <laughs> He said he he said your shirt is cool. Oh thanks. Thanks. Yeah, so it, I mean, that, that, that movie was rated PG. I don't think <laughs> no, Samuel Jackson would call them skull fuckers. Probably offset. So like the, the uh Offset? Offset the rapper would call him that? No, I'm saying Offset, he would call him that. Oh, is that even a rapper? <laughs> yeah, it's one of the Migos. Right? That's one of the Migos, I think. Who? The Who Migos? I don't know what that is. Oh, my God. The Migos. They is have their like own Me chips. Too? They is have like their the own Me chips. Too movie? They have their own chips. Me Rap too. snacks. The Me Too movie? Migos. They had, like, one of the biggest hits of... 2017. Look up Migos. Check out it's Migos. Not very, it's not very. Uh, You're not looking up Migos at all. Uh, and what is the. Uh, who am I talking to? Um, the Wailing. That's the next movie we're going to talk about. Jamie, will you uh, will you look up what the uh, the Migos hit was? That first Migos hit. One of the Migos is Mar Offset. I think he's the one that's married to Cardi B. Quavo is the one married to, uh, uh, yeah, see, Offset. We oh, you mean Wevel. I know Wevel. <laughs> He's a Spanish rapper. <laughs> and his son, Huevos. <laughs> How do you say it? Huevos? <laughs> Huevos? Oh, shit. <laughs> that means eggs, right? Yeah, whatever. Hueva is his wife. Versace was in the band too? No, that's the name of the song. Versace, 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 Versace. Remember that song? No. Yeah, it was like I don't listen to shit rap. I don't listen to shit music. Yeah. I mean, besides that one Dave Matthews band song, I don't listen to shit music. Oh my god. So I like it because it was in 21 grams and it fucking goes with the movie. All I know is if you haven't seen 21 Grams, watch that shit. Look, all I know is it's not horror, but god damn that thing is fucking One bad. day Carlos puts on some music and we're listening to it. And it's a playlist. And I'm like okay, And it wasn't yeah, a Dave Matthews, good. it was just Dave Matthews, not the Dave Math Dave Wait, Matthews man sucks. But that song is I don't listen to I've never heard anything else that man has done. But I'm telling you, I like that song. You need to watch 21 Grams. 
Jamie, have you seen 21 grams? You know, here's the thing. It doesn't matter. It's still fucking Dave Matthews. <laughs> no, I don't. So, all I know is one day we're listening to like cattle decapitation. Hey, you know what? I don't give a fuck because Dave Matthews. You should just call him Dave just... like everybody else does. I know you want to. I don't know the motherfucker. He bought this fucking little ridiculous. Can you say ridiculous anymore? It's kids. Uh... He fucking bought this ridiculous kids tickets to like a bunch of his shows because he was a huge fan and he didn't have money so he gave this little kid all this tickets and shirts white people call it special needs kids oh i'm mexican kid and he let him go on stage and sing i mean it didn't go very well singing wise but it's <laughs> what are you laughing at as far as oh my god, I'm just playing out the thing in my head. As far oh, as Dave this is rough. Matthews giving him all those tickets and merch and letting that little kid up there sing, that's that was cool of him. And I like Twenty One well, yeah, Grams. I mean, watch Twenty One Grams, dude. There's a lot of cool people that make shitty music. So the day I, I didn't realize that the day that like. The music we died? were the yes i mean pretty much your playlist died when dave matthews was added to it i finally took it off because you bitch so much well you know what was weird but then is this shit he listens to like electrical dance music with janet what oh no, don't even whenever, fucking whenever you whenever you i'm white of course i listen to fucking electric That's dance music bad. drop ass fuck. and like start fucking doing this no go into a k-hole um so like it was weird though because it, it literally I think went from cattle decapitation to Dave Matthews and I was like oh that must be a mistake and I skipped it and all of a sudden I just hear you like what the fuck I was actually playing when I did that <laughs> no I think you were upset no 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 I told I think I told you I was explaining the song to her I was lying oh, okay. I was lying because you did it and I knew that's why you did it and she was like she looked at me like, what? And I was like, shh. He just he changed it because he doesn't like this song. Oh, fucking damn. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck, man? I was explaining the song to this girl. And you're going to skip it? <laughs> oh, rough. I'm telling you, watch the movie and the song. Just what, 21 song, Grams? Just makes it. this. 21 Grams is supposedly the scientist weighed. The soul weighed bodies at exact moment of death and they lost 21 grams i tell a bullshit it's not real they proved that it's not yeah because nobody has fucking souls when you die you just going all oh, it's fucking actually batteries. you poo out 21 grams of poo as soon as you die i mean i'm kind of excited when i die because <laughs> i'm in a fucking shit everywhere <laughs> everywhere i just don't want it to be here because i'll be embarrassed <laughs> At your mom's basement? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be rough. But you know what? I've never... I've never heard of anybody saying, yeah, I was there when he died, and man, he fucking shit. Because <laughs> I think I would say something. I think, I think people don't like to talk about that. Part. No, I would. I would hope they would tell him, you know, yeah, Carlos, man, he fucking, that dude we had was fucking holding it in. That constipation just ended all at well, anyway, once. Anyway, at the moment of death, you lose 21 grams because that's the soul leaving the body. But actually, it's your fucking turd nuggets shooting out of you. And they fly far enough away that the weight doesn't. Yeah. Hit the scales. Okay. So, what was uh, the next movie we watched? The Wailing. The Wailing. The Wailing. What was that one? That was the Korean one. The other one was Chinese. Da Hong Jin so, directed it. I thought it was cool how they, in, in the sadness, though, they, like, killed the president of China. That wasn't. I thought the president grabbed the grenade and shoved it in. No, no, the 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 uh, 
the general grabbed the grenade and shoved oh, it. Oh, I guess I must have blinked. Because generals swore. just carry grenades around. Yeah, I know they do. Every general I've ever dealt with like had a grenade on their hip in case they needed to kill the president. <laughs> I don't know. Weird. So, uh, the wailing, though. You know what the wailing reminded me of? No. Fuck. What was the... Uh... Not story-wise. What was the movie we saw? We went to the draft house to see it. And it won for best foreign picture. It won an Oscar oh, for Parasite. best picture. Parasite. Parasite. It reminded me like a Parasite. Like I can see, I don't know. It could have been the same director the way it was filmed. That's what I thought. It's not, not no similarities in the uh, story or anything except everybody's korean it's not even that well i mean that's a similarity oh yeah <laughs> i guess i don't see race <laughs> so woke see jamie said it has a similar feel yes it did now i like it's 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 like a dark it's like dark humor dark comedy in some places yeah and then it gets serious and kind of creepy and then they'll throw in a one-liner that's funny it yeah cool. it's a, it was a it was kind of a slow start <clears throat> i felt like it's a really long movie how long is it do you know two hours and 36 minutes <sighs> yeah that's a long movie for now that was I mean, as long, as long as the batman what I still finished watching. No, that's how I'm like. Why, how do you even know? How because do you know? Like, it's two hours and thirty-four minutes. I think the Batman. Yeah, thirty minutes of that is credits. They don't count the credits. They do. No, they don't. Okay. Did you know you have to pay to, if you want your name in the credits? What? Yeah. What are you talking about? That's if you, real. Yes, if you want to be in the credits, you have to pay. Even like the main actors. It's like five hundred bucks or some shit. Yes. Even like the main people. But they don't even see it. What it's about like the drop. person that works for the company that does the credits? Mm, do they have to pay? So. <laughs> or do they just like pretend like they pay? And where does the money go? It goes to the to director. The Actors Guild or it goes to the director. I'd be like, nah, I'm good. I don't think this movie's gonna do very well. I don't want my name on it. Yeah. <clears throat> I guess well, he'd go to the Screen Actors Guild. All right, what? Tell him what's about. What's it about? Uh, it's about a uh, uh, some mysterious events happening in a small, small village. village. I almost said small town. It's yeah, a village. no, it's a village because it's not. Uh, Man, only... it's so cool. It reminds me of Korea. <laughs> It reminds me of a small village in South no, Korea. No, it's so beautiful. Like, oh, man. man, it is. Like, that's that's one of the things that really, this whole movie is like, you in know, the there's like some crazy and... brutal stuff, but it's all like in the mountains and, and like a lot of like aerial shots and drones have really changed the game on, on aerial shots. You remember when like when The Shining came out, they spent like, I don't know, million dollars to get that opening shot, you know, oh, above helicopter. the helicopter, and now it's like, oh, I'll just buy a five hundred dollar drone and throw a GoPro on it. You know, four K GoPro. No, they have a GoPro made just for drones yeah. now. It's crazy. That's what I'm saying. It's not that bad. Yeah. I don't know how I couldn't fly a drone. I'd crash that bitch. We should get one. We should get one of those little ones that they're always like. Drone technology has changed, and this guy has is upsetting the drone world. You know I've those never things heard that before in my life. Those weird commercials that come on and that tell you that somebody's like made an invention right on your YouTube videos, and then they try to sell you like a drone for like a hundred bucks. Well, anyways, we should buy one to fly it around. Just fly it around all the time. I bought one for Lyric. You did? Oh wow! When she was younger. Oh, like a little one. Man. I could I couldn't even fly that bitch. I'd crush it. It would be in the air for a couple of seconds and I'd crash it. It's you know, it's hard. You don't play enough video games? It's no. pretty much just like a video game. 
I don't, I don't do video games very well. Hmm. I you, get, I get bored. I get real bored. What about whenever you played my Oculus? I got bored with that. After like a couple of minutes, I was like. But it's crazy, huh? How it makes you all dizzy and shit. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, the Oculus. I don't know, man. Maybe if it was an actual video game that looks like <laughs> Modern Warfare. They have some on there, but they're expensive. I kind of want to get one. Man, just the one for the PS4 is like eight hundred dollars. The the headset virtual reality thing. But you can Holy you crap. can buy the games though, and there's free games on the app. So yeah. Um, PS4 so the, so, says free so, stuff. <laughs> Sony, where are you at with my free stuff? Yeah, we're talking about the wailing and sadness. Aren't y'all from over there? Oh, no, we probably just blew out the speakers. Oh, yeah. People probably just stopped watching. Why? Because we blew out the... We just started yelling at the... Started yelling. Um, so, the wailing... <laughs> yeah, just you. <laughs> I'm not yelling. I just wanted free stuff. You're at about a six right now. You need to bring it back down to like two and a half. <laughs> So the Wailing's a village, small village, cursed by something. They don't know why. And what was weird about it is, like, they did something in this movie. These are both subtitled movies. They did something in this movie that I don't think would work in American. In American. They kept calling the guy the Jap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, like, I noticed that. They're like, it's the Jap's fault. Oh, we gotta get the Jap out of here. I was like, damn, man. Like, that's uh, that, that'd be rough in modern America. But I think, I don't think it was in, I don't think the director was like, I think that, oh, I guess. Well, I mean, I don't think that's probably not considered racist there. No. Racism is. is a cultural thing. No, I, I, that is racist. Oh, you think they were intentionally, like, they were like, no, fuck but this Jap. Not in real. They did it in the movie. They wrote it like that to show that there was racism towards yeah. that guy. Yeah. Because they thought it was him doing this shit to begin with. So they're like, you know, fuck this, Jap. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it wasn't written where they're really like that in real life. It was written in the script for them to be racist towards him. That's what I think. A lot of xenophobia. But who the fuck am I? No, no. So... The Japanese man is the only person out of either one of these movies that I had any idea and who he was. And I kept fucking looking at him like, I know this dude. And right before we started, I figured it out. Yeah. And I just looked at Doug and I was like, that's where he's from. And what did you say? It's Boss Tanaka. I thought it was Tanaka. I don't know. No, because they said, and what Boss Tanaka thinks oh, is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Boss Tanaka. And then she runs on the table, cuts his head off. Kill Bill. If anyone wonders what we're talking about, the 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 Japanese man in the movie that slams is, his hand down and breaks the glass. Yeah, he's he's mad about uh, Oren Ishii taking over the Japanese mafia. That's the main actor in this, or the main bad guy, I guess, protagonist, antagonist. He calls so, her. <clears throat> she's a half breed, right? Yeah, quite, yeah. Quite he calls long. her. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, it, it's basically this village is plagued with all this stuff going on and and they think that uh, they think it's this Japanese man and he lives in the woods and so there's all these stories about him that his eyes are like all glowing red and he's like you know eating animals raw and you know all this weird so they stuff. reenact the, the stories that they tell and it's pretty fucking creepy like climbing over a rock with his I mean, red, like blood red eyes. Yeah. He looks like a fucking demon. Yeah. So, um, there's a couple of things that happen. The first thing that happens is there's, there, uh, the, the main character is a police officer and he's getting a call like, oh, someone died. It's the, the ginger farmer's wife. We need to go and check it out. And they go to his farm and the, the wife and the ginger farmer have both been murdered brutally. And there's a guy just sitting there, his eyes kind of rolled back in his head and and he's the one that did it. The knife's there, they arrest him. Um, the news is saying what, that he 
ate some weird mushrooms. He ate some weird mushrooms and freaked out, you know, and, and that's what did it. Um, and then the, uh, what's the next thing that happens? The next thing is they're at that night, they're at the police station and they're sitting there, power goes out. And all of a sudden, the guy's like, what the fuck is that? that? Like, freaks Starts out. yelling. And I thought he was playing a joke. I thought he was, too. Whenever I watched it, I was like, That's oh, another he's... thing. Their, the, their reaction to the dramatic stuff is so over the top. It's so funny. Yeah. Like, yeah. so funny. Like, so he goes ape shit, like, hiding under the desk and shit. It was pretty funny. And what it was, and he's a cop. So he's, like, kind of like this cowardly cop. And, like, and... It, and then it flashes just for a second, and there's like a naked woman just standing in front of the police station. Yeah, and very lightning, small. You know, lightning flashes, and you yeah. see a shadow, and she's and, naked. Yeah, and 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 they go out and they try to find her. She's gone. Um, but then the next day, there's a house that burnt down. But this movie's uh, so goddamn long. Like I'm, dude, forgetting. It's crazy. The yeah, what which, happens in yeah. what? And so. There's a, a lady who's um, – there's some dead people who are there and a lady who's going crazy and they get her in the ambulance. And they find out the people that burnt to death in the fire were actually stabbed to death. And while they're guarding the house the next day, there's this like strange girl um, who's uh, called the mysterious woman in the in the credits. And she's like throwing rocks at him and she's talking well, to him. Well, they also notice that they have all these sores on them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And rashes and shit. Yeah. And so she's telling the guy, like, I, I saw what happened. There was this, uh, what'd she say? What's, what is that? Uh, not a sorcerer. Uh, Demon? No. The shaman. There's a shaman. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. They didn't listen to what the shaman said, and so they all, like, basically died. So... <clears throat> Uh, weird thing all of a sudden she's in the house showing him where the people were murdered and then all of a sudden she's gone Wait, was it the shaman shaman no she just says you didn't listen to what the shaman said which means would it point. be the other shaman no, maybe he at was, that point we don't know what's going on maybe he was no shaman has oh, shown up at that point at the but then but then she disappears and all of a sudden the demon is like the one that was eating the deer in the story is there at the thing but he, then all of a sudden he pops up and he's awake and so you're like was that whole thing a dream like what just happened it was weird because the two things kind of seamlessly flowed together and then you know that was a kind of weird but <clears throat> i think he was seeing him so the next the next thing that kind of happens is he lives with his wife, mother-in-law, and uh, and daughter. And I think the next thing that happens is the daughter is like freaking out, right? I mean, kind of the next major thing that happens is the daughter is freaking out, and at night, and he runs in there, and he well, he she's, the the wife tells him though before like she has a fever, had to go yeah, get her medicine, yeah. 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 So you're like, oh, shit, is she going to get sick, too? Yeah. So she's freaking out one night, and the dad walks in there, and this little girl's acting is so good. I thought her acting in this movie was so good. Like, she went from being, like, a sweet little girl to, like, being, like, terrified, screaming. And, <clears throat> and she says, she tells her dad there's someone knocking, trying to get in. And, you know, I, obviously, we find out it's someone knocking on her soul because she gets possessed and so then the dad's just trying to figure out like how to get her unpossessed and what happens then they hire the shaman right the, grand, no, the, they, the grandmother hires the shaman they start talking about it it has to be the fucking the old man in the woods the Japanese guy yeah when do they go up to the when do they go to the mountain to go talk to him and they um, they they go up they go up to the mountain. I think right after that, but I think that's before he thinks it's anything to do with his daughter. They just think he has something to do with all Everything. the bad stuff happening. 
and so she they go up to they go up to uh his house and they're basically he speaks japanese so they take this this uh Priest. one of the police the police uh, one of the other police officers nephew with him who speaks japanese and uh <clears throat> they basically break into his house and they like find this room that has all this crazy shit in it like pictures of all the people that have died and like before they were dead and after they were dead <clears throat> and he has this crazy like dog there that's going ape shit that looks like a cane corso or like one of those big ass super pit bull looking things and um and it gets loose and attacks them and they like you know they've already found this room and it's just weird and and then the guy this was what i kind of thought was weird the guy comes back the japanese guy comes back and he stops the dog and he walks in and he just looks at him and they just like leave i'm like they destroyed his door breaking in and no he doesn't the cop start yelling at him and no not then they, i at thought that, they no him. at that point it just oh, shows this... him, it just shows him driving away and That's then right. yeah, yeah, yeah. and then it um <clears throat> but the other officer didn't tell him what they had found what he had saw in that room and it was that guy's daughter's shoe and so he goes back to the house with the shoe and he's like did you lose your trainer and she's like no and she's like what about this and he goes it's not mine and all of a sudden the little girl just flips like a switch just flips and she's like cussing out her dad and telling her to leave me alone and like calling him a cocksucker and all kind of crazy shit and just storms out of the room and he's just like uh what's up and then they the grandma's like you know something wrong this is a demon or something and <laughs> hires a hires a shaman and he comes in and does some crazy fucking rituals like sacrificing chickens and does he yeah I, I'm, that must have been. I was dozing stuff. off, man. I was fucking tired, so I missed some stuff. Uh, but I yeah. saw most of it. And so, um, as he's all. doing that, you see the woman who was at. You slowly start seeing the woman who was at the house that told him the stuff appearing around the guy, and so you're like, uh, "Is this the evil woman? Like, is this the ghost? Is this the, you know?" I started thinking like, oh, this is the, not the ghost, or, or this is the bad person, the, the woman, and and this Japanese guy is actually the good guy, like, trying to help, and everybody has it wrong, and, you know, this is, and, and I'm like, oh, man, they've got this whole wrong, they're doing everything wrong, because she's the bad person, and so after, after this ceremony that doesn't quite go well, um, him and some other guys go out to confront the guy and that's when he's like yeah well you're right you're right they had they made another trip out there and he tells him that you need to leave our town or i'm going to kill you you have three days to leave then they go back they do the ceremony um which doesn't go very well and he's like screw it this guy's possessing my daughter and he grabs like four or five of his friends and they go out there to like basically kill the dude he's like we're gonna go out there if he's a demon we can't kill him anyway so he's not human so uh, we'll find out and so they go out there to kill the guy and there's a freaking another guy that had already been killed during the whole mayhem and the stuff who shows up to the house who's like a zombie and they basically are fighting a zombie, and it was pretty nuts, I thought. Um, and then they see the Japanese guy. Japanese guy runs, they chase him. The Japanese guy sees the mysterious woman in white, and then just weird stuff happens, and they like take off, and all of a sudden the guy falls off a cliff in front of their car, and they hit him, and it's just like, I mean, it's just like all confusion and craziness for a second. That's what I missed. I missed. I didn't see the zombie fight at all. Oh my god! This one—it's awesome. They're yeah. like stabbing him and putting tools in his head, and he's still just oh, like. Oh shit! Yeah, I didn't like. Yeah, it's good. I didn't see that at all. I gotta. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna have to rewatch that. 
Okay, because yeah. I knew I fell asleep, but I was like... So you saw them hit the Japanese guy with the car, though? They're chasing him, trying to find him through the woods after they killed a zombie. They're like, where is this guy? And they're chasing him, and he's hiding. Um, <clears throat> but then they're like, okay, we're leaving. We're they in leave. a truck. And they're in a truck. I think and I they, see that. And all of a sudden, they hit him. He's just in the road, and they, like, hit him. And they're like, oh, shit, well, we Did killed they throw him. him off of the... And they threw him over the cliff. See, I caught that part. I didn't, I didn't know that was. And when they throw him over the cliff at the top of the hill is the woman in white just sitting there watching. See, I didn't see... I, I just saw them throwing over the body. And that just kind of more makes it seem like, oh, God, he's the good guy, and this woman is the bad guy. Yeah, he, hit the, he fell from the sky. Like, he, like, fell off the cliff, I think, right as they were driving, and they hit him. It's really weird. And so... Um, they throw him over the cliff and they just go back to town. Hmm. Well, they go back and and the guy's daughter, they he look, she seems okay and everything seems fine. And then all of a sudden, she's not fine again, and she's like the demon again. And it's it's all like weird and and you don't know what to think. You know, this guy's dead, but who? How is the demon still alive? And um, I'm trying to remember how, but like the the guy, I'm trying to think. What part? The shaman they had hired like is taken off out of town. He's like, "Fuck this, I'm out of here." And oh, because it was a fucking raven busted in his house. Yeah, yeah. And, and there was blood everywhere, and he had to kill it. And yeah. he's like, "Fuck this, I'm out." And so he goes. He try. I think he tries to go back to the little girl, the family's house. And the lady in white is staying there, and she says, "What are you doing here?" And he's like, nose starts bleeding. He starts like throwing bad. up like blood, and there's just like shit going everywhere. And and uh, he takes off. He just hauls ass, and he's still trying to call the guy. He's trying to call the dad. Well, the dad has actually gone to the shaman's house and sees that he is like gone, like he's out of there. And he finally picks up the phone. He's had tons of missed calls. He's been happy because his daughter was fine, but um, he picks up the phone and the guy's like, I was wrong. It's not the Japanese guy. It was the guy, it was the lady in white. You know, um, you need to do all this stuff. Well, he, he starts to go back to his house and he sees her. So he's standing there and the guy calls and he, yeah, that's when he's talking to her. He's like, I'm standing here with her now. And she's telling him, I'm the good guy. And the other guy. I the knew bad she guy. was. I knew the old man had to be. Oh, evil. it tricked me. Well, I mean, well, well, I thought he was dead. So he isn't dead. The priest, for some reason, knows that he like takes a weapon. He's like, I'm gonna go kill this guy because he thinks. I don't know why they don't really explain this, but for some reason the priest knows that the jinn or whatever he, the demon is still alive. The Japanese guy. So he goes back. And uh, and this is all happening all at once. The lady saying, "Don't go back to your house. I set a trap for the demon. If the rooster crows three times, we've, we've caught him. But if you go back to your house, your whole family is going to die." Well, he doesn't know who to believe. Do I believe the shaman or do I believe her? And at some point, I think he hears screaming or something. So he's just like, "I'm out of here." He goes back to his house. He passes past the trap she set, and it all starts fading. And, like, it's like flowers and stuff. And his whole family gets freaking executed. And she's sitting there. The, the lady's kind of, like, sad about it. Because she, she warned him. She told him not to go back or he would... His but whole then family they go to die. the priest. Yes, and then it cuts to the priest, and the priest is like, show me your true form and, and like... This is all kind of like intertwined and cutting back and forth, but like the Japanese guy like transforms into a demon. Like he's a full on like Oni or something. I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, his face is like blackened up and he's got like. It had to be. It had to be an Oni. Yeah. Like because he like grows little horns and his teeth get sharp. And I mean, it totally looked like an Oni. Yeah. So like. Um. And and it never shows what happens there because the guy's all like scared and the demon's just like laughing and told him he was who said I was gonna let you leave. Yeah. So you know he died. Yeah. 
and it's just kind of and then the you go cut back and the shaman goes into the house yeah after when he's dying and takes pictures of all the dead bodies which means was he the one was that his altar and he controlled the demon and because you said the shaman went to him and they didn't listen to him was that the shaman it wasn't the old man that would have went to him well see this is what's weird at the end it's like so it doesn't it give you, you any answers so you can do this shit and it definitely about. it definitely does not answer anything at the end nothing it's all up to your interpretations yeah that's what i that's what i kind of feel like at the, at the that's end, where i just came up with was that actually his altar because it was locked oh was that the shaman's altar and that was his demon and they were they oh were? like the demon belonged like he was kind of be the demon was being controlled by the shaman yeah and in fact he was doing these rituals to for the demon to possess the little girl and the whoever that's i don't know sounds good to me i don't know it's I'm like so... it. i'm gonna leave it at that yeah there's a lot of a lot of questions about that like, no like there was room on that big door on the titanic for jack to get on dude here's here look james cameron said jack was never gonna be in her life after that boat cruise you think she's like i'm gonna run away to be with some starving artist when she's with like a fucking millionaire guy that's not reality bro dude this was But the demon was. See? She just. Yeah, the demon. Jamie just ruined it. I had the ending in my see, head. See, that's, that's what I was going to say. It's like, maybe they weren't working together. Per se. Per se. S E. But maybe. I don't know. I mean, maybe. Maybe the demon and the shaman weren't working together. Maybe the demon was controlling the shaman? Maybe the fucking, I don't know. Maybe the demon maybe the shaman didn't even know the demon was there. Maybe the shaman was just trying to con these people. I mean he did get ten thousand bucks. Exactly. For one and day what, in work, reality he was work. conjuring this demon to show up. Man, there's all kinds of shit you can go with. Yeah, it's it really doesn't answer it at the end, but Oh, but it's really a good movie. It was a good movie. I mean, the guy loved his daughter so much that, like, at the end, even when she was a demon, he didn't. He knew she was going to kill him, and he was still just like, "Come over here," you know. It's real sad. I don't love my daughter that much. I'd be like, "Bitch, get out of here." Maybe the demon was controlling the shaman. Yes. I don't know. I don't know. It it, it really does not tell you. I think all. the shaman was doing this, right? Here's another one. Here's another okay, one. Okay, shaman. Oh, shit, I lost it. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Keep talking. Let me think of it. Shaman, mysterious woman, uh, possessed kid, skull fucking. Uh, maybe the shaman was doing this to possess people and getting paid to say he's going to get rid of them and the demon was just there guarding the house and his area I don't know but why would he be possessing the people was the devil actually possessing the little girl somebody was exactly but it didn't look like the devil he had his own problems with the priest. That's another one. I don't Man. Know. That dude I don't really know. fucked us. I fucked us. Rat in the skull. Dude, I didn't notice the hole was bigger. Now I need to go back and watch that again. Just like pre skull fuck, post skull fuck. Just like right there, a little like 10 to minute part. 
I don't know. I don't know. Well, either way, what do you think? What do you think about the movies? They were good. You like both of them? The Wailing was. The Wailing was good. It was just a good. They were dead. Except they for were the part I fell asleep on. I should have rewinded it, but I was just like. They were. They're very different movies. This one's more like. I like drama. The, super. I like a good story. Yeah. Like, where is this going? Yeah. It makes you want to finish it, so you're like, "What the fuck is going on?" Yeah. The the um the wailing is like a really good story, um, uh, you know, family drama with with demon possession, and the and the sadness is just a straight up gore fest. Balls to the wall. I mean, insane amount of blood and gore stuff and just like weirdness but both good I'd recommend 100% recommend so I don't know watch the whaling and then add your two cents worth yeah so uh, you got anything else no that's about it. I mean, I'm me. always, I'm always jabber jawing. What should we watch next? I think next week we should watch Saving Ryan's Privates and Rambone, <laughs> two of the greatest porn. Rambone First Blood. Two of the best porn. Uh, what do you call them? Knockoffs. I don't know. Jerkoffs. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I think next week we should do uh, Toxic Avenger and Poultrygeist. Like the original Toxic Avenger? Yeah. And Poultrygeist? I'm down with that. I've been actually bringing movies up to the basement, down to the basement, and watching them. Because I don't, I usually stream everything. But all you of have a sudden, Toxic Avenger? I've been wanting to, to watch DVDs and VHS and laser discs lately. And it's been a while because I'm always just streaming shit. But, like, I'm going to watch, uh, I have Night of the Creeps on VHS. Yeah, I'm, I'm down with Poultry Geist. You have that, right? What else do I have? I have uh, Return to Class of Nukem High. What else? Wait, is Poultry Geist a trauma film? Oh, hell yeah. I didn't know that was a trauma film. Jamie, have you ever seen Poultry Geist? Oh, it's... My wife was in a trauma movie. I won't tell you which one or why. Poultry Geist is... Hardcore. One of the <laughs> bloodiest shitting... <laughs> One of the fucking hardcore shitting bloody scene ever. It's messed up. I've seen it. I've seen it a couple of times, but it's fucking, it's pretty fucked up. It's called fucking Poultry guys. Yeah. And Toxic Avenger? Can't wait for the new one. Who else in that? Kevin Bacon plays a bad guy. Uh, what's his name? Tyrion? Tyrion? Tyrion Lannister. Tyrion Lannister. What the hell's his name? I forgot. Uh, guy from Elf. Guy from Elf. Little guy it's, from uh, Elf. Polish. <laughs> <laughs> Call Peter, me Elf one more time. Peter Dinklage. You know why everybody likes him and not uh, Willow? What's his name? Willow. R2D2? Anyway, he was in he played all the characters in Harry Potter. Because there's only one fucking midget in the world, I guess. Well you can't say midget anymore. Little person. Um he Peter play. Dinklage has Warwick Davis. I can't stand that little fucker. Why? I don't know. It his face. It just makes me want to hit it. Willow. I can't stand his fucking voice. Dude, there's Willow Part 2's coming out. Oh, god damn it. 
That should no. Well, anyway, Peter Dinklage was born with a different type of dwarfism. Miniaturism. Oh, mini dwarfism. Miniaturism. I don't know. <laughs> Where his hands look like I'm regular humans. His hands look like regular <laughs> regular humans. Like right, they're regular sized. Regular sized. Um. So he looks normal, just small. Small. Now Warwick Davis, now that dude's fucked up. Like his arms are longer than he is taller. Than he is tall. He is R two D two, right? No, that was the other little miniature guy. Little person. What's his name? I don't know. He was in uh, Time Bandits. Shit, they all were in Time Bandits. I was about to say, wasn't Warwick Davis in Time Bandits? Yeah, everybody was in. You know, Warwick Davis was only like 10 when he played the Ewok. What? Was it really? Yes, look it up. I'm pretty sure. He was really young. They showed a picture of him. Yeah, I don't even like Star Wars. Or Warwick Davis. I don't know. What's up with this Warwick Davis? I don't know, paint? man. I don't know. I'm going to invite him onto the show. When he was a little conductor and music conductor in uh, Harry Potter? Yeah. Fuck, I couldn't stand him. Why? I don't know, Doug. I don't know. I'm. I you know, know, at the very end, he was still there putting the protection spell into the sky with the rest of them. He made it through all the movies. No. He was alive at the very, very end. Damn, no, they I need to it... kill him. The guy that played R two D two was the uh, little person in Time Bandits with the little squishy face. Oh yeah, the older guy. Yeah, yeah. That was R two D two. Yeah. Warwick Davis wasn't even born. No, he was thirteen. When Return of the Jedi came out, which means he was like seven, whenever. Or eight, Star Wars nine. came out. In Jedi came out. That means I'm like the same age as Warwick Davis. Yeah, know. they show him in his little suit. Look what I've fucking done. Warwick Davis has been in 37 million movies. I know. He was born in 70. Mm. He's okay. Old. He's, old. He's old, a little bit. Older than me? <sighs> I got nothing else to talk about. I think we should wrap it up. Yeah, next week will be a trauma. Trauma week? Trauma week. We can just talk about all kind of trauma movies to yeah, celebrate the release. Who of cares? The new one. We'll just talk about all the traumas. Wait, is trauma putting out the new one? It's no way, right? But I mean, they obviously have to pay trauma something. And he'll probably be in the movie. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Man, well, it'd be cool if James Gunn was directing it. Because <laughs> that's where he started out. At Troma? Yeah, James Gunn. That's why he's uh, the owner of Troma. What's his name? Yeah, I can't remember his name. He's right in uh, Galax, uh, Galaxy Quest. Galaxy movie with the all the, the little, Galaxy of the Universe. The little rat guy. Guardian the of the gun. Galaxy. Guardian. Guardians of the Galaxy. With that rat. Yeah. The little rat and that tree guy, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, he comes out in that movie because James Gunn started. That's I mean, awesome. He started James Gunn's career. That's cool. Uh, okay. Well, I'm done. I'm out. Me too. I'm hungry. Yeah. So, thanks for uh, Yo, you hanging out with Mom. us. Mom, the meatloaf. Mom, what is she, do what is she, what is she doing back there? <laughs> okay well i'm done i think we will see you next week um have a good week take care of yourself we'll see you later <laughs>